request the congregation to stand up please As we gather here for the funeral service of John Richard Ebenezer, I'm reading from Psalm 116, verse 15. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. Would you pause for praying with me? Heavenly Father, in times like these, when grief grips our lives, our hearts, we thank you, Lord, that we have a father to run to who understands death, who understands separation. We thank you that we can run to you for comfort. You sent your only son to a gruesome death on the cross. We thank you, Lord, that he died but he's not dead. He rose again. That gives us the assurance that we will not lose Richard, that we have just merely sent him ahead of all of us, that one day, because of what you did on the cross, that we will meet him one more time. And upon which there is no separation, there is no tears, there is no sorrow, there is no pain, there is no sickness. There is no death. And so, Lord, we thank you for your presence during these difficult moments. I pray and lift up Priya, Sneha, and Nathan, Richard's family, Priya's family, friends, relatives, and all who are gathered here. May your peace that passeth all understanding continue to rest and guide us through difficult times like these alone. We ask this in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. As we stand, we'll sing our first hymn, Great is Thy Faithfulness.
Please be seated. Seated. We will have four tributes and I'd like to begin. A part of this role sometimes gets heavy when you have to stand in front of your own friend and say words. It's difficult. I've known Richard for close to 15, 20 years, even before he was a part of Priya's life. I chose to make this moment to celebrate Richard's life instead of me talking about my grief. So I have three things as I remember. He was silent and strong. None of you would have seen Richard speak much. But they say, quiet waters run deep. He was silent and yet he was strong. He was silent to the point that sometimes he silently dozed off in the church and he would come and even tell me that my sermon was boring and therefore he dozed off in the church. He was silent and he was strong enough to make sure that his opinions were heard. I want to title this morning's tribute for Rich Heard. He was rich with the grace of Jesus and he was quiet heard. Richard leaves a piece of himself in all our lives. If you've known Richard, there's no way you will not know him, you will not carry a piece of him in your life for the rest of your life. He was rich in God's love, grace and mercy and his testimony and we all hear him and continue to cherish him. He was silent and strong, not in just the way I said. Silent in the way he helped many there were so many times I've picked up the phone and referred somebody who's struggling to meet a need when they faced a wrong end or a difficult end with the law. And I would call him and say, Richard, can you help? He would say, give me their phone number and he would pick it up and he would do it. Not just do it at a random way in which he, any other person will do it, but he would take extra steps to go that. No one will even hear about those. No one need to come and tell him, wow, thank you. But that's the silent contributor that Richard was. He was selfless, silent, selfless, and strong to be a shoulder to someone who did not have. And I know that. Strong for someone who is having difficulty with ethics also. He never shied out to sharing his points about his views about the law and about the Lord also, not just the law. This is because he was rooted in the biblical truth. I had loads of conversations. For those of you who think silent, silence is a part of Richard, if you have a conversation, you know it runs for hours together. And some part in time it was scriptures. And I really am going to miss those points. For me, he was silent, strong, and also a wise person. Somebody who I can pick up the phone and ask, I have this difficulty, what are your thoughts? Off late, our conversations would end with even personal life sharing. And I'm glad for that. I miss a friend. The second is, he was courageous and honest. If you ask him your opinion, he will tell you upon your face his opinion. And he will not shy away from that. If you know him, you'll know this part of him. If you didn't know this part of him, you have missed something from Richard. And there was a piece of wisdom and a pearl of wisdom that he shared when he shared. He will never shy away to be honest. You are surrounded with people, especially when you're in a power of influence, people who will tell you good things and you want to hear only good things. You will be surrounded by that. But Richard is not one of those. You can be in the presence of Richard, ask him a question and he will tell you what you need to hear. And I want to thank God for a beautiful, honest courageous friend, honest in the ways he mitigated his life, his work, his professional ethics that he followed, courageous in his views about 
Christian way of living. Never once I have heard he compromised. I've never seen him compromise even once. I just want to thank God for a bold, courageous, honest witness. Silent to the whole world, but active in the home also. Active in the home also. This corona has become a blessing for everyone. And while work from home was an option, he was an active dad at home. He was an active husband at home. There were sometimes he was a playmate to Nathan and an active soundboard to Sneha. She could bounce off anything to the point even Priya needn't know anything. He could bounce off something to her father and, and they both had good times of going out. Silent, strong at home, silent, strong for us, courageous and honest. And this is what I will continue to remember. I'll remember him as victorious and contagious. Richard is victorious and contagious. A reminder to me about the eternal hope, the eternal life here on earth. Not something about there that's coming later, but here on earth. To me, Richard is an epitome of victory because he fought the battle knowing that victory is meeting his maker. Meeting his maker. You ask his friends, he would have told them, this is what the doctor said. They said this is terminal and this is what it is. And he would not finish with that. That will never be a full stop for him. He went ahead to talk about his eternal life. He went ahead to talk about hope while he is here on earth. To me, Richard is the epitome of victory because he fought the battle knowing the ultimate victory is meeting his savior, his creator. And he is victorious here in front of us. Conversations in our home happened looking at his faith saying, Will I be this way if I face this situation? We've had at home. So I want to thank you, Priya, Richard and Nathan, for allowing your family person to be a lighthouse to the whole world. To me, Richard is about culmination of faith. All our faith culminates on this one thing, which is, all the declarations of faith in Christ alone. And that was enough for him. And so as I stand here, Richard has left to a place of peace. But Richard has left a piece of him in all of us. And I choose to remember that he was silent, he was strong in the Lord, that he was courageous and honest with his biblical truth and practice, he was victorious and he will remain contagious with his faith. Priya, Sneha and Nathan, along with the host of angels, along with the cloud of witnesses who compass you about, I can assure you this, that Beulah, myself and children will be with you all and we will walk along with you. I now request Hepsiba Sundar, Richard's colleague, to pay the second tribute. It's, it's going to be very hard to speak about Richard. Yeah. I've known Richard for the past 16 years. He's been such a dear friend and a colleague to most of us in IJM. You know, he's been blessed with a very gentle spirit and a very curious mind. I know all of us in IJM who worked alongside with him, we knew how silent he was, how gentle he was, and at the same time, what a curious mind he was. He loved to learn from anything in life. He loved to learn from a good conversation. He learned from other people's lives. He learned from the little things around in life. He embraced life with so much um, childlike 
attitude. He really embraced life with, like a child. And there was so much joy in every little thing that he did. A cup of coffee he, with his friends, he enjoyed that moment. Having a deep and an insightful conversation, he enjoyed that. He enjoyed going out with his friends. He enjoyed going out with his family. Um, and it was such a delight to hang around him and have l such deep conversations with him. But what I real when I think of Richard, what reminds me is there were three treasures in his life. And uh, I just want to limit my conversation, uh, my sharing time to that. The first one is he treasured every relationship that he had. He never took any relationship for granted. I don't know if you knew this, like even in COVID, he would take time to call all his friends on a regular basis, not just once. He will call, he will check on us, he will check on our work, how our family members are doing. He'll talk about his family and then he will trail off into his much desired conversation about politics, about justice, and the conversation will go on and on. And you need to have a minimum of one hour if you want to have a good conversation with Richard. And it was not just once, he repeatedly kept doing that. And he really enjoyed talking about his times with his family. And his second greatest treasure was his family. Every time you ha talk to Richard, he will talk about how he wants to be the best dad to his children. He'll talk about Nathan a lot, the little things that he does. He will talk about Sneha, the conversations that he has with the teen. And, um, all the wise words, uh, exchanges that they would have. He will talk about Priya. He will celebrate all the little things that Priya would do for him and as a family that they would do together. And uh, he, he was a complete contrast to Priya. Priya was out there. He was silent and he was quiet. He never tried to change her or make a fit into his mold. He just celebrated the differences and embraced the family that God gave him. And he wanted to be the best husband to Priya and best parent to Nathan and uh, 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 Sneha. And he always drew that inspiration from the scriptures. And thirdly, that he desired, uh, cher the relationship that he cherished the most was with his savior. You know, he loved coming to the church. I remember he'll say, I like, he'll come to the church. He'll sometimes talk about the sermons that he ha heard in the church. And then he'll talk about the little things that he enjoyed in the ch church, a handshake with the pastor, a small conversation with our other church members, and the things that he learned. And it was not just something that he just learned. He wanted to apply that in his life. In little ways, he will talk about how he wants to apply that in his life and be a better person. His faith was very simple, very straightforward, and very strong. And throughout this journey of difficulty, I think in Jan 10th, he messaged us with this in news. And both Priya and Richard, and one of the things that they told us was they've trusted the process with God and they journeyed with God. And it was so much an encouragement. Every time we would go, as one of Priya's brothers said, every time we will be with a heavy heart, but when we enter the home, there'll be so much laughter. There'll be so much joy in the midst of so much pain and suffering. And you will come back so encouraged and, um, you know, knowing that they have held on dearly to God. And yesterday, as at church, when we got to know that Richard is admitted and um, he's been taken to hospital, and as we were singing this particular song, There is a Redeemer, I was reminded of Richard as we sang this lines. I think it was God giving us the assurance that he wanted his dear son home. And he said, and this is the words of this song. And I'm sure this is what Richard is doing. When I stand in glory, I will see his face. And there I'll serve my king forever in that holy place. And he's standing before Jesus. And he must have said, hither by thy help I come. And Jesus would have embraced him saying, Ebenezer, welcome home. And Priya and, and the children and the extended family members, the encouragement that I want to leave with you is, Ebenezer, the stone of help. 
Every time you mention his name, remember Jesus is your stone of help. He will embrace you. He will journey with you. I know we've lost a dear friend, a dear colleague, and I know for the family, it's been a big loss, but he's in heaven worshiping God with all saints. God bless you, and we will be with you in this journey. Thank you. I now invite Mr. David Livingston, Richard's brother-in-law, to pay the third tribute. Duty Corinne is a pearl city. When the pearl divers dive, they will tie a rope. That is a life-saving rope. There is a fun fact. The rope will be given to the brother-in-laws. Either uh, sister's husband or uh, brother's wife. The reason is the crucial moment will be always trusted by the most trustworthy and responsible person. So I feel that uh, little guilt in me, I did not uh, slip the rope. Uh, I just uh, gave it to God. I gave it to God. He is the one who held and He is the one who has is holding. I strongly feel that. So, Richard, he came into Priya and children's life and our family as a surprise. And so soon, uh, he gave another surprise. We did not know him a uh, couple of decades ago, but we will know him all through eternity. Whatever he was to us, he came as a season of spring into Priya's life, children's life and our life. But today we understand spring season is also very short. Richard was, uh, he means a lot to us. Our family is a very small family. We don't have many people, although relatives are there, we are almost a kind of a very small unit. No parents for him, father, no father for us. But we had a very strong cause to live. To live in Christ, to live for Christ, to live only for Christ. So we needed a, a strong direction and uh, Richard was the person whom God sent. I think he has finished his job, that's what we understand. And uh, he stood as a stem of the small tree. And whatever he could do, he has done. I think he has given a blueprint for our life. Till the last moment, he prepared us. After my 20 years of service as a pastor in the Methodist Church, uh, my leadership began as a superintendent. I remember the classes he took, which really you know, made me stand on the track. Remember those long hours. He mentored, he taught. And uh, everything is an asset to me, to me and my, my brother heading ministry. And uh, of course, our uh, talks were discontinued. Always our long hours of talk was were adjourned by shout by Priya only to be continued again. So he was a treasure. Whatever excited him, he made us a part of that. IJM excited him. Andrew Kirk excited him. Pastor X excited him. 
many people excited him we remember the alapi trip he some characters we were in our family he bridged everything and made us a unit we only have to continue that jesus moses <clears throat> christmas day gives a symbol now all of us in our family we are washed by the blood of christ connected strongly to heaven that red cord the blood of jesus was connected to him and uh, but one thing i noticed was the one thing that uh, comfort me is jesus was terminally ill 33 years only he lived so reflections of jesus in him moses was pushed when the verdict was that children need to be thrown into the water it was his moses's mother pushed him three months and their family supported then again another push into the river of basket there was another push by the sister this is exactly what happened from the day when he was discovered cancer in this church one of the doctor friend from this church all were pushing ijm gave a push the church gave a push many friends brother nathaniel served communion every day the adair cancer hospital till that last moment i really am surprised how god worked the santosham hospital yesterday so all of us did our part of that pushing and stretching the string priya did it till the end and finally he was lifted he is a flagship oh as servants of christ we all have committed to live and die for christ he has confirmed it that uh, i will go forward you come back so we all have a reason to live that is to live for god so i'm sure priya will take it children will take it we all will take it and we remember that the life is a reflection of heaven and he has uh, gone ahead of us as i told just a while ago we as pastors meet people sometimes people complain it's not worth of living for this guy as a husband or a wife living all these years but some people who has given them to death early have shared it's not how long you live how better you live even if it is short and we had such a character in our family i'm so proud i salute you this wonderful man richard thanks for your presence means a lot to us dear pastors and everyone god bless you thank you pastor now request priya to pay the fourth tribute i didn't have the courage actually to come and speak here but many um, asked me from yesterday uh, did richard suffer at you know during his last hours and another question was what were his last words so i thought i would come forward and answer those questions but before i speak i say those Uh, you know i answer i also want to share with you the journey we had from january 19th so january 19th uh, was the day this was confirmed at the adair cancer institute that he had 
<coughs> stage 4 lung cancer um, as soon as we heard that I cried a little bit but Richard said Priya this is not the time to cry this is the time to go to God this is the time to really know who he is by giving us into his hands so that's when our faith journey started he is the one who started our faith journey um, then we came home friends were there we met with them spoke with them laughed at the end and then we had this uh, little time just Richard and me time and then uh, this is what Richard said he said I'm not afraid of death he said if I die I will only go to my father and that's the happy place to be so I'm not ha uh, you know scared to die and then he also said I am not scared about my family also because he said so long God only took care of you all don't think I took care of you all so long God provided for you all so long God took care of you all so I know God will take care of you even if I'm not there that's what he told me on January 19th and then he said but the only thing is God has taught us to trust in him and expect miracle from him so I'm choosing to stand in faith and I will expect miracle from him that's when our journey started our faith journey uh, he was not scared to inform people that he had cancer immediately we sent information to as many people as we can we could to ask for prayer and so many I think everyone who is seated here are part of our faith journey until this moment you're all part of our faith journey um, Richard faced every day with faith faith professing faith and he faced each day with courage one of the incidents that uh, I would like to share is um, you know after January uh, October 19th until then we had a very smooth sail you all know there were many days and months we forgot that he was undergoing cancer treatment many days we forgot um, every every time he had uh, chemo the seventh day he has to go for a blood test and then there's another blood test the day before chemo most of the time we forgot the seventh day blood test because we were not conscious of you know this thing itself that that's how beautifully God led us and then um, October came one day Nathan said as my brother said Papa 10 months you have lived miraculously we need to celebrate it and immediately Richard said yes we will celebrate it there was not this question of we haven't seen healing yet why should we celebrate or at least one year is a completion to celebrate no he immediately said yes we will celebrate how do we celebrate was the question and one of the verses that God gave us in the beginning was I will not die but live and proclaim what the Lord has done to me and that's when the, that meeting was only about Richard proclaiming what God has done to him to all our neighbors he shared his testimony um, and then after 19th uh, we had a setback we had to go to the hospital and there were students because he had uh, pain slight pain back pain uh, they have a pain department so people from pain department came and there were two students who came to do a survey so he's in pain we would expect people to come and relieve the pain right but there are students who are coming to ask how is your pain what are you doing with the pain just taking a survey with him I was not there then when I came back he said uh, you know these students they were actually students asking me questions uh, if it was before you know I would have said no I'm not in a stage to answer because they also asked can you answer my questions he said if it was before I wouldn't have answered the question but now I thought this is an opportunity to talk about Jesus to them so he sat with them and he said 
Yes, I have pain. Then they said, are you scared? What happened? Were you panic, uh, in panic when you first heard that you, you know, had cancer? He said, no, I was not in panic. You know, Jesus is with me. He's taking me through. He spoke about us. And he said, I was talking to them about Jesus. All these, you know, whatever we went through, uh, however God took us through. And I'm going to tell you about Tamil. How do you say that? 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 அப்படின்னு சொல்லி சொன்னாங்க பேசிக்லி அந்த பிள்ளைங்க வேறு ஷாக்ட் இப்படியும் பதில் சொல்ல முடியுமா அப்படின்னு சொல்லி தேவ ஷாக்ட் ஸோ ஹி வாஸ் யூனோ வேர் எவர் ஹி வெண்ட் ஹி ப்ரொஃபெஸ்ட் இஸ் ஃபேத் அப்புறம் இந்த ஜேர்னியில் நிறைய பேர் எங்களுக்கு வந்து யூனோ தே தே கேவ் என்கரேஜ்மெண்ட் டு மீ தே ஸ்டுட் இன் திஸ் ஃபேத் தட் வி வெர் ஜேர்னி பட் தேவர் ஆல்சோ பீப்புள் ஹூ ஆர் சேயிங் இட்ஸ் ஓகே ஹேண்ட் அம் ஓவர் டு காட் வை டு யூ வாண்ட் டு சி ஹிம் சஃபர் நீ பிடிச்சி வச்சுருக்காத கொடுத்துரு லெட் காட் டேக் எம் அப்படின்னு நிறைய பேர் எனக்கு சொன்னாங்க இது கொஞ்சம் வருத்தமாக இருந்தது எனக்கு அண்ட் எனி திங் அண்ட் எவ்ரி திங் ஐ வுட் ஷேர் வித் ரிச்சர்ட் ஈவன் யூனோ ஐ ஹேட் தி ஹி வாஸ் ஏபிள் டு டேக் இட் தட்ஸ் வை ஐ வாஸ் ஏபிள் டு ஷேர் வித் ஹிம் ஸோ வி வென் ஃபார் ஃபார் த ரேடியேஷன் வி வர் சிட்டிங் தேர் அண்ட் ஐ ஸ்லோலி சர் ரிச்சர்ட் சம் பீப்புள் ஆர் சேயிங் தட் ஐ ஷுட் சரண்டர் யூ டு காட் ஐ ஷுட் கிவ் அப் ஆன் யூ அப்போ ரிச்சர்ட் சொன்ன ஸ்டேட்மெண்ட் இது பிரியா ஒன் திங் ரிமெம்பர் கேன்சர் கேனாட் கில் மீ யூ டோன்ட் கிவ் த பவர் டு கேன்சர் டு கில் மீ கேன்சர் கேனாட் கில் மீ டசன் ஹாவ் தட் பவர் ஓன்லி காட்ஸ் கால் கேன் டேக் மீ ஹோம் அப்படின்னு சொல்லி சொன்னாங்க ஸோ அவங்கக்கிட்ட இருந்து தான் எனக்கு நிறைய நிறைய பேர் சொல்கிறாங்க நான் ரொம்ப ஸ்ட்ராங் அப்படின்னு இல்லை ரிச்சர்ட் இஸ் த ஸ்ட்ராங்கஸ்ட் பர்சன் இன் ஆர் ஃபேமிலி ஹி கேவ் ஸ்ட்ரென்த் டு மீ ட்யூரிங் திஸ் பீரியட் Um, and in the 12, no, whatever time, 12 or 11 months period, le, he never stopped any of, doing any of his duties. Uh, even when he went for chemo, he did not allow me to drive the car. I will drive the car. I will drive the car. I will drive the car. He did his duties. In the past few years, he will say, you will come to your mother and you will come to your mother. So he is the one, all the time, correct, he was continuously doing his uh, sickness or his tiredness never stopped him from doing any of his duties. Um, now, coming to the last words. Last, Abdeen Sali Sonanana, Anna, Enude Anna was speaking there when he said, suddenly around 4.30 he said, bring a pad, bring a pen, because he cannot speak uh, much. In the time, you can't speak in the time. Like the words were not very clear. So he said, you bring a pad and a pen. So I gave it. One full A4 sheet he wrote. He was in severe pain. But he wrote one full page. A4 sheet. It was all about how flock ministries should be. Flock ministries, you know, the structure, how it should be. Every position, what they should do. Uh, how they should get appro- you know, budget approved, all those things he wrote. And then he called me and he said, you read it, do you understand? Okay, now you call your brother, uh, tell him these things because he was not able to say it, right? So he wanted me first to say and then speak about that to him. In fact, as my brother said, in between a couple came home to see him. I don't know from where he got that anger. He said, ask them to go out. I'm like, Richard, somebody has come to see you. Don't ru- be rude like this. He said, I'm having an important meeting here. I'm talking about flock ministries. Ask them to wait, he said. So he finished that. And then the gasping started. After he finished that, uh, the gasping started. And uh, somewhere in between, I was saying, my sister-in-law is the one who kept giving him food. At one point, I stopped doing things for him. My only job was to sit near him. He never would allow me to go anywhere uh, out of the bed. I had to sit with him. And I would say, Anni, I would say, 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 she was giving. And then one day, she had to go to, the, go to work. So I said, Akka, I would say, I would say, I would say, I would say. And then Richard, with his voice, this is what he said. God! will take care he said and from that point on in a family la 
நாங்கள் எல்லாருமே ஏதாவது கேள்வி கேட்டுக்கிட்டோம்னா வி சே திஸ் வி சே இன் த சேம் வாய்ஸ் அண்ட் சேம் சவுண்ட் வால்யூம் வி ஆல்வேஸ் நவ் டெல் டு ஈச் அதர் காட் கேர் அண்ட் ஐ நோ ஃப்ரம் நவ் ஆன் of us um and then suddenly all of a sudden nare olar aarambichaanga in fact sneha patini endha veetla endu vara abinna because we gave him morphin uh, he had pain and then uh, but suddenly she sa- he said with a loud voice this time i am a joyful man he said he said joy i am in a joyful day he said and ye thirinu joyful solranga abdin soli i was just looking at him and then he said i am surrounded by people who love me and uh, who pray for me abdin soli sonanga adu and the sentence where was one of his last sentences and then konja extra va gasping was like it was increasing and at that point he said priya i am ready to enter into god's glory he said he said that but nanga adha romba eduthukala because sneha was standing there papa you will not give up papa you will not give up papa you will repeat what i am saying please say i will not die but live papa say it papa say it so he said that word but for sneha's sake he was also repeating what she was saying i will not die i will not die so you know he fought the fight other than he was very cooperative nu sollina adukku solluven ena every time akka used to give him something his even though he didn't want to have avarku kashayam ellam kudikano na pidikadu but every time uh, my sister in law wanted to give something he would cooperate he would say you want me to drink okay i'll drink whether i like it or not i will drink and then you want me to turn the side bhayangara pain irko but then he would do it because he was he wanted to cooperate with us he wanted to support our faith he wanted to support sneha in her faith which is why even in the last moments when sneha said papa papa repeat after me papa repeat after me he he still said what repeated what sneha was saying and then until he was rolled into the icu sneha said papa are you awake Papa, are you awake? Papa, say fine. Papa, say you're fine. And then he said, Sneha, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. He kept saying that. He was very, very cooperative. He wanted to uh, travel in our faith. He said, I want to support them. So he traveled with us. And then, when we were in the hospital, one day when Akka had to, uh, was giving... food she said richard nama solid try pananom abdinanga so he said okay today i will try solid he ate idli and then he was trying to say something we didn't understand he asked for a pad pen and he said we achieved today because he cooperated and he said we achieved today um and then at the end i asked him richard do you remember what promise are you holding on உங்களுக்கு ஜீசஸ் என்ன ப்ராமிஸ் கொடுத்தாங்க என்ன ப்ராமிஸ் உங்களுக்கு ஞாபகம் இருக்குது வாட் யூ ரிமெம்பர் சார் ஹி சட் ஐ எம் நாட் டெயில் ஐ எம் தி ஹெட் தட்ஸ் ஒன் திங் தட் ஸ்டுட் இன் ஹிஸ் யூனோ மெமரி லாஸ்ட் மெமரிஸ் ஹி வில் ஆல்வேஸ் பி த ஹெட் ஆஃப் அவர் ஃபேமிலி மெனி திங்ஸ் ஹி லெட் லைக் அண்ணா சட் ஈவன் தோ ஆல் மை பிரதர்ஸ் அண்ட் சிஸ்டர் இன் லாஸ் ஆர் ஓல்டர் டு ஹிம் இன் மெனி மெனி ஆஸ்பெக்ட்ஸ் ஹி லெட் த ஃபேமிலி so he will always remain as a uh, head as god has kept him to be a uh, lot i can speak but i want to just speak about the few things that happened on the last day and also i want to take time to thank each and every one of you people who traveled with us in this faith journey you know people who prayed with us every like as though something has happened to their loved one you all prayed uh money kept pouring i didn't have to worry about money at all you were very very everyone in this church were very very not only church office friends so many friends very generous to have 
to a extent if somebody gives me money i'm scared ayyo oh, next edho need varapodu pole abdin that's how provision came from you all uh, thank you thank you for your willingness to walk with us when we were at the hospital many people provided food you came and visited us you came and sang songs with richard love singing uh, many came and sang songs thank you so much there were so many other things you did thank you all so much i call upon mr joy vergis the senior vice president of the india hub ijm to commit the family in prayer let's pray father we are so grateful as we listen to these tributes and these stories and anecdotes we are grateful lord for your faithfulness that we sang about for your goodness that we have seen lord we just want to bow our heads in gratitude for everything lord that has happened so far you have said in your word lord that you are the god of the living and not of the dead so we celebrate richard's life here on earth and we celebrate his entry into heaven into your presence and we look forward lord to meeting him in heaven in the new heavens and the new earth as well we thank you lord that our lives are not in our hands our lives are in your hands and so lord be just want to thank you for your specific faithfulness in the lives and the situations and the circumstances lord thank you for all that we heard today we want to commit priya and sneha and nathan and richards wide the family lord and priya's wide the family into your hands trusting that as priya shared so beautifully that you will take care we know lord that you will not just because you have done that in the past but because you that's who you are you are the caring providing loving god and so as your people lord we want to commit the family into your care we want to commit this community of faith into your care we want to commit lord friends and colleagues family members clients stakeholders everybody lord into your care and keeping knowing that the work that you initiated through richard you will complete in the right time and in the right way thank you lord once again our hearts are filled with gratitude to be part of this gathering just to listen to your to the stories of your faithfulness and to listen to these testimonies of faith in the precious name of jesus our lord we pray let's declare the peace that richard leaves with us reminds us about when peace like a river will be the hymn that we'll join together with the choir and sing
Please be seated. I now request Sneha Jillian to read the scripture portion for the service. Bible reading for today is taken from First Thessalonians chapter 4 verses 13 to 18. But I do not want you to be ignorant concerning those who have fallen asleep as to sorrow as others who have no hope. For if we believe Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. For this we pay to you by the word of the Lord, that we, we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means proceed those who are asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel and with the trumpet of God and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to, to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore comfort one another. These words. What is rapture? In the most unexpected moment, a believer and the master meet one another and so will we be with the Lord, right? Isn't that what every Christian believes we long for? May I say, with all confidence that the moment a believer dies, it is his personal rapture moment. When Jesus takes Richard and says, you have fought the good fight, come with me. Yesterday afternoon, Richard saw his maker. He is there where there is no sickness. It's only in this physical body. He is in a place where there is no sorrow. And that's why I always say there is no funeral in heaven. Because once a believer walks in, He and she will be with the Lord forever. I want to take this sharing and talk about how the Bible teaches us about sorrow, death and hope. Before which I wrote a line which I feel Fitz Richard, a man of worship, he worshipped gladly. A man of wisdom who spoke carefully. A man of witness who lived boldly. 
a man who won he won victoriously he never stood at a pulpit to preach he was never known in many places as a leader but a man whom the lord would have sent yesterday afternoon when he called him home he would have said well done good and faithful servant because the bible says what good does it do to a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul thank god richard won that race but the question is where is god in all this could god have done things differently could god have had a different plan i want to take this and say to everyone listening and watching online that ever since the fall of mankind god very clearly said on the day you eat the fruit you will die no one is going to escape death i said this in many funerals many of you know my only sister died when she was 24 a mother of 11 month old child she could have lived she should have lived i would love to see her again i would never know how she would have been at 30 40 50 60 i still remember her 24 where was god why didn't god answer our prayers on that day and god says he decides the time to be born a time to die we are too feeble to understand eternity so this is not an hour to hate god this is an hour to say god i don't have anybody i have only you and god says i'm going to be your emmanuel and priya sneha nathan family i want to tell you god took him on christmas day and god is saying that emmanuel is going to be your emmanuel I don't understand chap Genesis chapter 1 how can I understand life or death of any person If I can understand God then I'm not human This world we will never understand fully about God that is why he calls us to walk by faith Faith is this you understand little bit that is enough follow So every time in the journey ahead when those questions come and they will come in many forms the pain and sorrow will come in ripples i want to tell you this we are there for you we can say that and we are there for you but i want to tell you emmanuel will be with you because he was with us he has been with us in our family why is it easy for some why is it difficult for there are all kinds of questions i have only one answer god of all love will never make a mistake taking him at this age on that day in 2023 on christmas day that's just part of a wisdom that will never register in this mortal mind i really wish My wife and I we are driving back yesterday and that when when brother called and said my first question or oh lord you could have done anything else but you are wise you are wise so every time that question comes god where are you and god says i'm going to be your emmanuel the second thing that i want to tell you but i saw in my brother i will miss that hug every sunday god says value that relationship not only with god but with all your loved ones because life is brief man of wisdom he spoke carefully with people he teaches us none of us are going to be around for the next 100 years 
A hundred years from now, all of us are dead and gone. Handle your relationships carefully. Because he lived carefully. He lived carefully. I want to tell you this, my brother, my sister. The Lord gives wisdom to those who seek him. And I can tell you in 2023, the times that I've interacted with Priya and getting to know this journey, this verse has come to my mind again and again. Draw near to me and I will draw near to you. Yes, Nathan? Now people say, if God answers my problem, takes away my pain, then I'll come to church. I want to tell you this, that is Satan's way of keeping you far away from God. Because my Bible tells me God is not answerable to me, I am answerable to God. But my God says, if you come near, I can, I can assure you, I'm not going to stand and watch you suffer. I'm going to be with you in the journey. Why? Because as this verse that was read in 1 Thessalonians 4, and so we will be with the Lord forever. Now that alone is forever. Everything else is temporary. Some people take pride in their visiting cards. You know what I've studied? You know what's my career? You know what's my status? When people talk to me like that, I really wish I could take it and write in front of them, tear it apart and say, that's how you will be on your funeral. Why? Because everything of this world and in this world is temporal. Only Jesus and the Bible is forever. Richard Garrett. Draw near to God. He will draw near to you. Thirdly and finally, God has plans for you. Don't ask me what I don't know. But God has plans. Why didn't God have different plans? I don't know. But I know this. God has plans. You just have to wait and see. A year from now, five years from now, ten years from now, thirty years from now, if the coming of Jesus tarries, it will unfold. I'm not saying the pain will go away. The pain, it, it will be a different thing. Because you will see that where he could not be with you, God would have changed, altered plans and made it something beyond your wildest imagination. I say this from experience. Sometimes we can even share our joy. Pain cannot be shared. It's a personal emotion. It's a personal emotion. And the Bible says, the Lord understands and he has plans for you. And I say this to the family, he will be your Emmanuel. He will draw near to you and he has plans for you. If you ask me what, I don't know. Do I like all God's plans? I don't in the moment. But one thing I have learned, just know that he is wiser, he is better, and it's better to follow him and not hate him. Because I am more lonely without the Bible than with the Bible. I am more lost without the Bible and say, here on I won't come to church, I won't open the Bible, I won't pray because God did this. And I want to tell you, that's a place where Satan wants to take human beings because that's exactly where Satan took Adam and Eve. Don't follow this God. And I want to leave this message. Follow Jesus. Only in heaven, in that glorious home, it will not only make sense, 
we will rejoice forever. We're going to sing these songs. Abide with me. And the Lord's my shepherd. I want to ask you this question, and I don't want to miss this opportunity. The famous statement made by Franklin Graham at the funeral of his father, Dr. Billy Graham, when he asked this question, where will you be at your funeral? Today, when we remember Richard, we know without a shadow of a doubt that we see only his body. He is with Jesus. Where will you be at your funeral? Don't say later. This is a great reminder to say life is true fragile. Get right with God now. Get right with God today because when it's too late it will really be too late Richard may not have earned zillions Richard may not have accomplished many things that the world boasts of but he won the race he is with Jesus can we stand and sing to our God even now as you come and pay your respects We'll sing the Lord's my shepherd and another song of Richard's favorite, Abide with me. Let's stand and worship. You can come on to my right and go back on to my left.
just I requested for a moment to say an announcement and before that a word of thanks. We are greatly overwhelmed by the love and the affection and the kind of support you all have given by your very valuable presence which is very comforting and strengthening and uh, also the IJM family along with the chief and the colleagues and all the dear friends who are here very especially all the members of the Andrews Kirk Church. Being a pastor I would always see that the funeral happens with all respects the best possible way but yesterday till the last moment even after he breathe the last. We did not know how to go about what to do about it. I must say such a big thanks to the dear pastor, Reverend Isaac Johnson and also Pastor Paul, the assistant pastor and both their wives, Pastor Moss. They just stepped in and took over. I really thank you, Pastor. The kind of uh, advice in taking decisions, making allocations in the place behind, helping us in arranging all these things. We are overwhelmed. This is more than what we expected. And uh, pastors, you made us realize church is not a building. It's much more than that. It is made up of people and God's servants. We are really thankful to you. And also for every individual who were with the family, with Priya, Sneha, and Nathan all through at home, neighbors, Gayatri, Ramesh, Helen and the mother who prayed, Pastor Nathaniel, yesterday Brother Barnabas and Manus, various others. First time I'm seeing all of you and this is a honor God has given to our family. We thank you so much heartily. Hope you will be with us when we will shortly announce another day of memorial. Now many of you may not know that after this we will be transporting Richard to his own native place. His brother is with us in leading. It is a place called Venganji near Kaliaka Vilay in Kanyakumari district. They have a family burial site tomorrow morning 9 o'clock. There will be a burial service and he will be there. After the service, we all are leaving. So thank you so much with this announcement. We also would like to say, kindly offer a prayer for us whenever you remember our family. Thank you. Let's pray. Gracious God, your word says, you are close to the broken-hearted. All our hearts, O oh Lord, ache. And only your presence can grant us peace, strength, renew our faith in Jesus. Knowing that Richard has gone before us, it's going to be an amazing reunion, an eternal reunion. And even as they sow this body in the ground, there is a glorious body awaiting every child of God. May your presence be with Priya, Sneha, Nathan and the loved ones. May the comfort, grace and guidance of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with each one of us now and forevermore. everyone to stand